Kansas City and then Houston again. Well, you look at those numbers, you would take them all as far as his first start goes tonight. But again, he's comfortable in this ballpark at his debut here last year. At times, a little bit shaky with his command, no doubt about his stuff. And as the game went on, it started to see his velocity start to go up for him. It started the game at around 92 miles an hour. We were wondering what was going on. By the time he finished, he was 96, 97. So I think you'll probably see some of the same today. Just trying to get a feel for it, get his feet on the ground. He pitched well in his first outing. And I think there's a lot of success coming this young man's way. If he can command the strike zone, that will be a big key for him. He was able to do that. And then at Safeco Field, against these Astros again, he's only had three starts, two of them against the Astros. So going to get his third start tonight, I thought he was exceptional. You look at the exploding fastball. He had a great curveball in this game. You can see it right there. And also the big changeup for him, which I think we'll see quite a bit tonight with the left-handed hitters in the lineup. But this is a guy that has plus stuff throwing downhill at six foot five, long arms. And yes, he can get the velocity up there at times. So I think we'll see a lot of that tonight. Michael, that is some easy gas. I <laughs> yeah. mean, goodness Yeah, gracious. he's fun to watch. When he gets it locked in, he is fun to watch. Very impressive. Very impressive. The Astros and the Mariners coming your way in a matter of minutes here. We look at the kids at Discovery Green enjoying themselves. They have the heat index up around 95 earlier this afternoon. As Brad told you, the roof is keeping us cool this evening. Back with more on the post of the free game show. On the free game show coming up next. Sports being brought to you by Ford. We are local. By AMPM, too much good stuff. And by the Emerald Queen Casino, the entertainment capital of the Northwest. For more info, visit emeraldqueen.com. Take that light rail from the Astrodome to the University of Houston. You pass some really good breakfast locales along the way as well. We continue along our pregame show, and we might see some more great pitching 
coming up tonight because over the weekend, Mike, we saw two stellar performances, one by Cleveland and one by the Mariners. Josh Tomlin of Cleveland, one hitting the Mariners, just one base hit, and Kyle Seager was the one to get the hit, and that was all that he was able to get that night. And so the Mariners struggle offensively against uh, Tomlin. The good news for them is McHugh is a similar type pitcher. You're going to see a good four-seam fastball and that overhand curveball, and the curveball was a good one for Tomlin. So the Mariners hopefully can make their adjustments a little bit quicker tonight off of McHugh. And then on Sunday, well, this was special watching Felix on the mound. He really had the crowd going. It was a big section out there of K cards for Felix. The only base hit a seeing eye single back up the middle just out of the reach of Cano. And that would be it for the Indians. You can see that Felix dialing in the outside corner. Great changeup as he used Usually does, but he also had a good curveball in that game and a dominant performance overall by Felix Hernandez. He was spot on with his command the entire game. Consecutive one hitters, a rare breed. Yeah. Let's take a look back in history, shall we? Consecutive one hitters in the same ballpark, the Nationals against the Reds in 2013. Consecutive one hitters in the American League, Rangers, Tigers in 96. And then consecutive one hitters by each team. Last time it was done, Tigers, Royals in 1990, and it's only happened seven times in the live ball era. And tonight, Taiwan Walker goes against Colin McHugh. This should be interesting. Tonight. It should be. If the Mariners are going to get that one hitter again, it's going to be Walker and bullpen. I don't think he's going to get deep enough into this game. All right, we'll see. Lloyd McClendon seeing Taiwan Walker pitch against a big league team for the first time. He'd only seen him against a minor league team during spring training. Mariners and the Astros, game one. First pitch straight ahead.
Welcome, everybody, to Seattle Mariners baseball from Minute Maid Park here in Houston, Texas. Glad you've joined us here. First of three against the Astros. And here is your first pitch of the ball game to Indy Chavez. And it's off the plate for ball. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, Root Sports crew on hand here. Good pitching matchup. Colin McHugh against Taiwan Walker. And here's Indy DH and leading off. Yeah, don't be surprised if Indy starts the game off with a hit. He has a base hit in eight of the last 11 games that he has led off. So getting the team off to a good start has been a big part of the plan for Indy Chavez. Inside 3 0. Umpires for tonight's tilt. Clint Fagan at home plate. Tim Timmons at first. Tim Welke, crew chief at second, and Todd Titchener at third. And a four pitch walk to Indy Chavez to start things off. Nice starting lineups brought to you by Chevron. Following Chavez, it will be James Jones and his Cano, Kyle Seeger. Congratulations, American League Player of the Week, a 583 average for Kyle with a couple of home runs. And it's Morrison, Zanino, Saunders in the lineup, hitting seventh. Ackley and Miller rounding out the nine. There's James Jones. Got it to yesterday's game as a late game defensive replacement. Looks in the strong. What about these pesky Astros, Mike? Mm. The Mariners are five and five against them. How about last year? They started five and five, then won five in a row, then lost four in a row to finish ten and nine on the season series. Well, if you look at the Astros, offensively is where they've had their struggles. They are last in hitting, second to last, 14th overall in runs scored. And so they've had their struggles. They strike out more than more than any other club on base percentage. They're also 14. But they will hit home runs. Fourth in home runs. And they are first now in stolen bases. Big reason why is their second baseman Altuve. Jones back. They're three and three in this homestand. One and two against Atlanta. Two and one against Detroit. And boy did they bottle up Victor Martinez and Miguel Cabrera held them. To one for 25. Well they're starting pitching is pretty good. And that includes McHugh, the young man that's going tonight. A 2.86 ERA for him coming into the game, and he has pitched well against the Mariners. Triple foul. Their bullpen has been an issue for him. Their bullpen ERA at a 4.70, so a high ERA for the pen. We'd like to get McHugh's pitch count up and get him out of the game if you can. Go to work at the bullpen because, again, he has pitched well this year, and he had success against the Mariners. Game back on April 22nd was a doozy, wasn't it? Dominant. 12 strikeouts in that game for McHugh. Good fastball. It's been 92-93 with a 12-6 curveball. Fly ball left field. Going back as LJ Hose makes the catch. Take a look at our Seattle City Light power play as Robinson Cano makes his way to the plate. First pitch to Cano yesterday. Look out. No, oh, that. Woke him up a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, hate to, yeah, you hate to see a fastball up around anybody's head, and that was a little bit too close for comfort. But in a 2 0 count, he hits his fifth home run. More importantly, gives Felix a little bit of run support. Felix was dealing in the game. It was locked down 0 0 up until that two run homer by Cano. Cano's third at bat, and that home run broke an 0 for 14. So he's ready to start in the other direction now. At the batting cage and Lloyd McClendon. We were watching Cano and Lloyd. Experienced and accomplished hitting instructor. He said, Come on, one of the best. And just shook his head and just smiled. It's nice to have him in. He says, Hey, you have no idea. <laughs> well, that's one of the things he's been able to count on. Cano, third in the lineup. High from McHugh, a 27 year old right hander out of Naperville, Illinois, lives in Atlanta now. McHugh, one run of support in 18 innings, striking out 21 over his last three starts. I mentioned his ERA at a 2.86, but a 4 and 6 record. Big reason why is the lack of run support for him. 
And hopefully Taiwan Walker will continue that. Yeah, yeah. Outside it can out tune one. Q came claimed off of waivers last December, Colorado. Got him loose. He'd been with the Mets. Eight games in 2012 and three games last year. He's behind here three and one. Remember the first time we saw him April 22nd. Back in Seattle. He's making a season debut his 10th. Make the uh, season debut and American League debut. Didn't have big numbers at all. Well he's not real sharp so far 12 pitches only five strikes and time out called by Andy Chavez. Over at first base, if he has an issue with the spikes, maybe he need to tie his shoe, but he's ready to go. Cano drives one deep towards the hill. Measuring it, making the catch is Presley. Tagging is Chavez coming in the second with a dive. He's in there safely. Presley continuing where he left off against Detroit, catching everything out there. That ball was hit a long way. It was, and what a great decision by Chavez to tag up and get himself in the scoring position. But you can see Presley out in the center field. Springer, good looking rookie in right. John Singleton at first base. They recently called him up. And of course, Jason Castro, the all star catcher for the Astros. But what a play by. Indy Chavez he went about halfway and when he saw that Presley was going to make the catch it's deep out in that area he ran all the way back to tag up and get himself in the scoring position for the Mariners hottest hitter in Kyle Seager. American League player of the week. Mr. Productivity. He's done well against the Astros this year, 306 average with a couple of home runs for Kyle. Two outs and Chavez at second. Breaking ball. What's going on in this? And that is his go to pitch, is that hard curve ball. You see 71 miles an hour. Chavez at second. Seager in his last 15 games hitting 421. That's it, foul. Interesting what you're talking about in the open, the similarities between uh, McHugh and Josh Tomlin. I think with Tomlin is, is in 2012 when he had his arm surgery and he came back from that, he didn't have the good curveball. He couldn't he couldn't really throw it as hard in the type of fight that we saw at Safeco Field. And, with McHugh, he has that kind of curveball, and he will also bounce it to try to get a swing and a miss. So you have to be aware of that as a hitter. Maybe a little better fastball for McHugh. Oh, two to Kyle. And that'll do it for the Mariners. Runner stranded in the first inning. Taiwan Walker, 2014 big league debut, coming up after this.
That day is here. Taiwan Walker on the mound for the Mariners, starting a game here in 2014. So he goes against the Houston Astros. Let's take a look at their batting order. Leading off, the league's leading hitter, Jose Altuve. 347 batting average for Altuve. You can see in June, 424, nine doubles. Or excuse me, nine RBIs, eight doubles for Altuve. He will also steal you some bases. You want to keep him off the bases if you can. Presley Springer, Singleton, Dominguez, Castro, Guzman, Gonzalez, and Hose rounding out the nine for the Astros. For Walker last year, he had three starts. 3.60 ERA, 12 strikeouts, four walks, 15 innings pitch for Walker. He's got to feel a little bit of comfort because this is where he made his big league debut last season. Yeah, I think so. This, this, this is about as soft a landing as you're going to get when you think of that. He's already been here, and this is a Houston Astros club, Altuve aside, that has struggled hitting. Offensively, they are last in hitting, 14th in runs scored, last in doubles. Last and on base percentage, so they they are right, that's a lineup that hopefully he can get his feet on the ground. One of the things we know about Altuve is he will go to hacking if you take a look at his numbers this year. Average hits, singles, stolen bases, 36 stolen bases, and he's on a run right now. He's, he's been stealing two or three at a time, and so he's been fun to watch for the fans here in Houston. But some tremendous numbers for him. Oh, two. Cano had him played perfectly. Takes his time and throws out the Astros second baseman. On a good fastball from Walker, 95 miles an hour. Take a look at the defense for the Mariners. Ackley in left, Jones in center field, Michael Saunders out in right. And on the infield, Seeger at third, Miller and Cano playing at the middle, Logan Morrison, your first baseman tonight. And Mike Zanino will do the catching. And as we watch Jones run the ball down in the outfield, don't forget about that hill in center field. And you can see the numbers for Walker in Tacoma. 3-1 record with a 2.70 ERA, 46 strikeouts over the 40 innings that he pitched. Just 12 walks, opponents hitting 185 against Walker. Good fastball. He'll be 93 to 97 miles an hour. Hard curveball and a changeup. Coming off a great performance against Oklahoma City. Complete game, four hit shutout, eight strikeouts. Which is the Triple A club for these Astros, isn't it? Oklahoma mm -hmm. City. Yeah. Here's the center fielder, Alex Presley. Alex, 28 years old, been with Pittsburgh and Minnesota. Twins waved him in late March. Astros picked him up. Change up from Walker. He's throwing a couple of them to Presley now. Talking to some people about Walker today, so the curveball is even better than it was last year. His fastball speaks for itself. The cutters improve. The main thing is health. Well, he's healthy, and, and you hope that he would continue to progress and, and, and polish himself up a little bit. You can see the raw talent with that great fastball, and that's good news to hear about his curveball. And so far, his changeup has been better, too. At 96 miles an hour. Looked like it hit one of our herd looks. Sounded like it hit one of our microphones well, down in the dugout. And it still works. <laughs> that is foul. He had no chance getting around on that. He's throwing hard, and we talk about it with, with Chris Young a lot throwing downhill, six foot ten frame. Walker probably has a similar type uh, type style. He's not six ten; he's about six five. The long arms coming straight down at you, and you can see he's throwing the fastball by him that one at ninety five. One and two to Presley. Curveball ball foul. Yeah. Good news is you were hoping that Walker. You, can understand he would be amped up. Nine pitches, eight strikes. That's what you want to see. Come out, throw strikes against this club, make him earn it. So far, he's been able to do that. Good pitch number seven coming up here to Alex Presley, the center fielder, hitting at 240 with four homers and 11 runs batted in. Two and two. Waits, Willie Bloomquist, Rick, the pitching coach. 
Get a chance to look at Taiwan. A meaningful game here. Slap to the gap. Cut off by Jones. Base hit for Presley. Well, good at bat for Presley. Eight pitch at bat. He finally gets a fastball up that he can handle and just slaps it into the outfield. Gonna bring up George Springer, the right fielder. And two intentional walks yesterday against Detroit. Been swinging it pretty pretty good lately. Three homers in his last nine games. And the guy that can put some distance on a on a fastball. Good matchup here. Well, we saw him earlier in the year. He had a tough time even putting the ball in play, and since then, he's raised his average about 50 points, and he's sitting on 15 home runs right now. That's a lot of home runs. He's done a lot of home. damage. Yes. 441 foot home run straightaway center on Tuesday. 2-0. This is the Mariners. Second trip of three to Houston. Two and oh. That is killed. Two nothing Astros. Sixteenth home run of the year for Springer. Jumps on a 2-0 pitch. One of the things the Astros do well is hit home runs. They came into the game fourth in the American League in home runs. And on a 2-0 count, he jumps on a fastball middle in. And I'm not sure where it came down, up there on the glass someplace. Now the railroad tracks Oof. up there with the train. Nothing cheap about that. No. He indeed George Springer's come a long way since that first time when Mariners saw him. He had recently been called up at that point early in the season. There's another heralded youngster, John Singleton. That's a couple of quick words. Well, make a trip out there. He just gave up the home run. Calm him down a little bit. Get him back in the strike zone. Early lead here for the Astros. 2-0 to Singleton. Another power on power matchup here. Three and one. On deck, Matt Dominguez, the third baseman. Down low. Ball four. And the third man has reached, third consecutive man to reach base here in the first inning. Rick Waits, the pitching coach. Now have a conversation with the young man. Wouldn't be surprised if one of the first couple of pitches he throws here is either his curveball or his changeup. Try to get him mechanically back. You're not going to overthrow those pitches and get him back to where he can manage his fastball a little bit better because he's getting wild with his fastball. And I thought first couple of hitters he did a good job with his changeup and his curveball, which helped his fastball. So maybe Rick Waits went back out to the mound, try to get him back in line again with his mechanics. Getting back to pitching. He's yeah, competing exactly. hard. Wanting to throw that fastball through a wall, but it's not helping him. No, he's throwing hard. Yeah. See that the competitor and these guys come out. Sometimes they just want to just take it up another notch and become self-defeating. One zero. 
There's a strike. Dominguez, good day yesterday against Detroit. Three for four with a double. Nashville's won two out of three against Houston. Against uh, Detroit. Uh, Seeger. Cano, they turn it, and they do. Well done. On the horn go the Mariners to get out of the first inning. Two run homer by George Springer. Two nothing lead. Houston. Nice turn of it around the horn double play here to get Taiwan Walker out of trouble. That was a good idea by Kyle. I wasn't sure if he was going to be able to get it to second in time. And you can see they just get him out at second. And a good turn by Cano. Kyle along with being American League player of the week offensively his numbers speak for themselves. But he's had a good couple of months on the defensive side of things too. He's made a lot of really good plays including in yesterday's game. Made a couple of good plays for Felix. One for Rodney. Logan Morrison will lead things off for the Mariners here in the top of the second. Just a couple of Seager numbers for you among third baseman. Tied for second. In home runs third in total chances second in assist. Third innings played and third in game started. I mean the guys he's there every day for the Mariners. Morrison Zanino and Saunders here five six and seven. Second inning against Colin McHugh. I'm not sure, but I, I think if you would, people back home, if you would like to vote for the All Star team, get your votes <laughs> in. I believe you can cast 30 of them. That's Kyle right. Seeger be a good candidate. Vote early, vote often. It's late. Marson nine for 21 on the homestand, and they just got word that Springer's home run was measured at 445 feet. Two and one. Well, you have a guy out there throwing 95 miles an hour and a strong young man and catches up to it, which he did, barreled it up. It's going to go a long way. Sounds like he aced physics. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just took a lot of hefty hacks, hoping yeah. I would catch one every now and then. Oh, boy, me. <laughs> it worked out pretty well for you. <laughs> Three and one. Well, so far, McHugh hasn't been particularly sharp. You'd like to see the Mariners take advantage of that again. He, he's been on a good roll and pitching well. He's walked the leadoff, man. First two innings. Start of the game, 72 and a third innings pitch. Only 49 hits given up by McHugh. 81 strikeouts over 72 and a third. That's a really good number. Again, good fastball, 92 to 93 miles an hour and a hard curveball. 12-6 curveball that he will throw. 
He can throw it for a strike and then he'll also try to bounce it to get the hitters to swing and miss when he gets ahead of them. Well, here's the American League leader in home runs for catchers, Mike Zanino. All one. Mike coming off a five for 22 homestand. Pitching coach Brent Strom. Yep, coming out. Well, 22 pitches for McHugh, just 10 strikes, 12 balls. And it looks a lot like Walker did in the first inning, having a tough time with his fastball. I'll tell you one of the things, just thinking about that in Taiwan going in down, giving up the two run homer. One of the things that's been amazing this year with the Mariners pitching staff all the starters is if they have a tough first inning or a tough second inning typically when they come out they're much better so I don't know what Rick Wake's pitching coach is talking to them about but he typically gets them back in line and you can see them pitching deep into games I'm not sure what the overall plan is going to be with Walker last year they pretty much held him to five innings when he went out there and the Mariners have the best bullpen. Good breaking ball from the queue. And they have an extra member out in that pen today. They end up sending Romero out to activate Walker. And so they have Mauer still in the pen. Exactly. They have an extra arm out there if they need it. That was one of the things Lloyd McClendon talked about. He doesn't know if he's going to give me five or six innings. So we can take care of the rest. Danino oh. gets into one deep. And that is. Gone. A home run for Mike Zanino. A two run homer. Mm -hmm. Tied up just like that. 12th homer for Mike. That didn't take long. Well, ties in with the team leader, Kyle Seeger, with 12 home runs. Mike leads all catchers in the American League in home runs with his 12 homers. Salvador Perez from Kansas City is second behind him. Perez with nine. Now Zanino. He gets a curveball. He skies it out to left. Wasn't sure he had enough on it. He hit it so high. It looked like it was going to scrape the roof here. He's able to hit it about three or four rows deep and ties the game up. He's going to be fun to watch here in the second half, isn't uh, he? Without a doubt. With the adjustments that he's making. Michael Saunders. And with Mike leading American League catches in home runs while you're at it with your <laughs> American League All Star balloting, they want to sock it in on Mike Z. Well, we showed a lot of his defensive numbers too over the weekend. Curtis Wilson is digging up a bunch of those numbers, and he's out in front of a lot of catchers in that category too, which is the most important to Mike handling his pitching staff and all the many things that he does well behind the plate, along with leading American League catchers in home runs. Drops change up in there, to 71, two and one. Mike Zanino's tied it up with a two run blast. And Saunders way ahead here, three and one. Could have Saunders back just off the DL, three for 11 on the homestand. He got back three days ago. Dustin Ackley's on deck. And Saunders will take the bat. Three consecutive men have reached here for the Mariners. Walk two run homer to walk, and that's a third walk so far. For McHugh, Capital One share builder with the Seattle Mariners, is proud to support and benefit Seattle Children's Hospital with its Saves for Kids program for each Mariners save. Capital One share builder will donate $1,000 to Seattle Children's Uncompensated Care Program. Capital One share builder incorporated member FINRA and SIPC. Ackley due for a bust out. He's 0 for 17. 0 for his last 17 with Saunders now at first. Watching McHugh, he'll walk a couple of batters a game, but already three here working in the second inning. He walked five against Minnesota earlier this year, and then four against the White Sox, and those are the two high games for him. So he's well on his way to surpass that with three walks working here in the second.
on a one Ackley with Saunders at first. Having a tough time of it lately. It's the over his last 17. Saunders back safely. Runner goes, swung on and missed, throw down the second. In time. Oh. Tim Welke, the second base umpire. I thought maybe Saunders, he slid short of the base and then tried to step around him. I wasn't sure that he tagged him. But Tim Welke said that the tag was good. You see him stop short of the base and then step on it with his toe. I wonder if that was a hit and run. All the two strikes here to Ackley, one out, nobody on. Typically, Michael will get a better jump than that when he's trying to steal a base. So I'm wondering if it was a hit and run. Take another look at the slide by Michael. He knows he's going to be out, so he slides and stops short of the tag. And it looks like he does get a piece of his leg. And Ackley swing and a miss. He's gone. Two away. Second strikeout for McHugh. Two down. And it's on the curveball. We've been talking about his curveball. That 12 6 break is a tough one to square up. Right at the bottom of the strike zone. Good pitch from McHugh. Fred Miller will get his first at bat. Fred has been swinging the bat well lately. Had a good month of June. Slaps one foul. You see, month of June for him. 300 average, four home runs, 11 RBIs. And he's hoping that will roll right over into July, starting tomorrow. Way outside from the Q, 101. So it's 21 pitches. Pitching to the bottom half of the order. Two outs. Well, that's what you wanted. You want to get his pitch count up. Center field make that out two big going back. Makes the play. Two run homer by Mike Zanino. Ties it up at 2 2.
and Mike Zanino for the Mariners as we take a look at our CenturyLink link to what's next. Next two matchups here, Sashi Wakuma goes against Jared Kosart. And then Wednesday, Chris Young against Brad Pika. And from there, Mariners will have an off day in Chicago and play the White Sox for three over the weekend. Jason Castro, their all-star catcher. Walk off homer on Friday against Detroit in the 11th inning. Breaking ball for strike. Castro, Jesus Guzman, and Marwin Gonzalez. Walker with 22 pitches in the first inning. So hopefully he will settle down. Walker takes a feed from Morrison. One away. It is now time for you to tweet your photos using the hashtag Mariners fan photo for a chance to have it shown later in the game brought to you by AT&T. One down here in the Astros second brings up D.H. Jesus Guzman. Guzman working on a six game hitting streak. Pitch from Walker. Off the plate for ball one. Two and out. Back with a strike, two balls, one strike. Guzman. Two run homer by George Springer after a base hit by Alex Presley. And the Astros runs in the first. That's a better curveball. He threw a curveball, ended up getting a double play in the first inning to get himself out of the inning. It looked as if it kind of slowed down a little bit. That one right there it looked like he went ahead and finished it. Good arm speed on it. You can see the break that it had. 12 6 curveball, 74 miles an hour. Another one. It's a beauty. Strikes out Guzman. That might be one of the tweaks that Rick Waits passed along. I'm sure. After the first inning, two outs. Well, we saw Willie Bloomquist going over and he was talking to Rick Waits, and I'm not sure what that conversation was about, but if I had to guess, sometimes they'll ask, especially a veteran guy like Willie's been around for a long time, if he's picking up anything. He's telegraphing anything or tipping his pitches. Good break on that curveball. And so maybe that was one of the things that they talked to him about in between innings because he had good arm speed on both of those curveballs. Uh, I'll tell you, he's, he's 94 to 96, 96 on that last fastball. But he looks like he's throwing harder than that. Oh, so, yeah, so I would tell you that for, for the hitters, we can talk to the Astro hitters tomorrow, but it looks like he has a lot of late life on his fastball. He's throwing it right through Mike Zanino. First pitch strikes, two for eight. That's him. Hard hit deep. It will hit the front post. Bob Homer. Marlon Gonzalez with the home run. His third, 3 2 Astro. We talked about the Astros again. This is a club. They will strike out a lot, lead the league in strikeouts. But if they get ahead in the count, both home runs now coming on 2 0 fastballs that have been up and in the middle of the plate. And he tomahawks this one at 94 miles an hour. When you're ahead, you're going to be more aggressive with your swing. Get it started a little bit early as you see. Ball hits right off the foul pole. For Gonzalez, his third home run of the year. 3-2. Houston. And Walker was behind in that count. And Gonzalez got what he was looking for. There's that arm speed. You can see at that time. Slowed down. Two out, nobody on a run in. LJ Hodes.
Seager's going to have to go. Walker. What a play. He made a play similar to that last year. Justin Smoke said it was the hardest ball he's ever caught at first base. Walker gives up a home run. It's 3 2. Astros. Ball game. 3 2 Astros and Kuma. He stands 6 3 on the mound and now he can stand six inches tall on your desk or shelf. First time ever, Sashi Iwakuma has his very own bobblehead. So join us Saturday, July 12th. Mariners take on the A's at 7 10. Thanks to Root Sports, the first 20,000 fans are going to take home this great collectible. The tickets to Sashi Iwakuma bobblehead night log on the Mariners.com. Back to the top of the order for the Mariners, Indy Chavez. Step in, and he walked his first at bat, was stranded out at second base. Colin McHugh so far, three walks, a couple strikeouts. Fifth start as the DH. Mr. Chavez. And he walked on four pitches his first time, leading off the ball game. Strike. And he's hearing it from the dugout. We played umpire Clint Fagan. Three and one. Twenty two balls, twenty strikes thrown by McHugh. Altuve. He's quite one out here in the third brings up James Jones, flat out the left. Oh, sure Jones had heard about the the hill out in the center field before Singh is believing and running up it. It's got to be a totally different experience. Well, we were here last year. Might have even been earlier this year. But Michael Saunders had to run up the hill. We didn't particularly like it, so I'm sure he's, he's had a conversation with Jones about that hill out in center field. I wish they would just take it out, but you can see the flagpole. In play. In play. There's base hit for Jones. Bobbled, thought about it. Hose gets it back in.
Give you some updated numbers on all star balloting in the American League. Cespedes, 1.9 out left field. Trout and Bautista. The infield of Donaldson, Jeter, Cano, and Cabrera. Matt Wieters, done for the year. Work somebody else in there. And how about Nelson Cruz? Great year for him. I think that's the first time we've seen Cespedes on there. It was Melky Cabrera. Yeah, he just moved in, moved up into that spot today, Cespedes. His age really sent the best record in baseball. Here's Cano. Robbie first time up. Went deep just in front of the hill in right center field. It was run down by Alex Preston. It's deep in center field. Out there where Robinson hit it. He probably hit it about 390 feet for an out. Dead center field 436. Jones does not take off. He bluff as Cano. There's a 1 1 count. Andy Vance like first base coach. I was standing behind the hitting cage today when they were hitting on the field. I'll, I'll talk to some of the guys tomorrow about it, but it seemed to me with the, when the sun was out, just the glare through the glass when they had this roof closed, they had the glass out in left left center field. And standing there, it seemed to me that it was a little bit distracting. I believe Trent Jewett was was throwing batting practice at the time and where the ball was coming out of his hand it was up there in that light area especially what for left handers right for the left hands yeah. they have definitely the lefties they're looking into it Jones with a great break throw down to second and he's in there safely now the stolen base for James Jones he's 15 out of 16. Really good jump. <laughs> And that early slide again. He gets some distance on his slide, that's for sure. Good base dealer, not just a fast runner, but he has a good idea of what he's doing out there. Another good jump for him. Cano with a 2 1 count. Jones with plus speed at second base. in a breaking ball for strike two and two. Mariners fourth in the American League runners in scoring position. Started the game today 266 batting average. Big part of the success Mariners. Six games above 500. They win tonight would be seven first time they've reached that mark this season 2-2. Two -two. And he went for the strikeout for McHugh, third of the night. Two down here in the third inning. Talked about McHugh and throwing the 12 6 curveball in the dirt, and that's what he does here to Robinson Cano. He'll throw one that's not quite as hard and get it over for a strike. Typically, he'll throw that one early in the count. And once he gets two strikes, he'll try to bury it, and he did a good job of it on that last pitch. Brings up Seeger. Struck out on three pitches. Put shift on for him. Altuve and trip right field. With three strikeouts, he's walked three, giving up a two run homer to Mike Zanino. And when Walker's given up two home runs, George Springer, two run shot in the first, and then Gonzalez with two outs in the home second, put Houston back in front. Q 
Barbecue wanted that one badly, didn't get it. Seager in good shape here with the 2 0 -oh count, two out. Runner at second. The splits he was looking for. 53 pitches, 26 strikes, 27 balls for McHugh. Two and one. Last pitch the curveball again, just 72 miles an hour, and that was the one he throws for a strike. If he throws his curveball again, He'll probably try to bounce it right off the top of home plate. Think you're trying to get going on the road here. Started tonight a 201 hitter on the road with one homer. Got a 2 2 count. Runner goes. And Castro cannot make the transfer. Another stolen base for Jones. And a full count for Seeger. And a great jump from Jones. Runs on the right pitch. It was a curveball. He probably knew that was able to pick up the sides and run on the curveball. 15th and 16th stolen bases for Jones here in the third. Seeger trying to get him home. Three two pitch to Kyle. And he struck him out. Second time Seeger has gone down swinging. Mariners lead a man at third. The Astros three. The Mariners two. Being brought to you by Century Link, your link to what's next. By Jack in a Box, head to Jack in a Box for the new Jalapeno Ranch or Barbecue Ultimate Cheeseburgers at participating restaurants. By Seattle City Light, visit Seattle.gov/wePower for more information. And by BNSF Railway, sponsor of the BNSF Blast. Coming up on Wednesday, we have a discussion about Craig Biggio, great Astro, and is credentials for the Hall of Fame. Jose Altuve leading it off here in the home third top of the order, followed by Alex Presley and George Springer. Jose, the leading hitter in the American League, bounced out to second. That one up the middle. Cano makes the play and throws him out. Altuve also leading the league in stolen bases with 36. 
Good backhanded play by Cano. Crossed his body with the flip right on the money to Morrison. To retire Al Tuve, but he hit the ball hard back up the middle. Good play for Cano. I don't know. I can't remember anybody in a long time who can throw the ball like that across his body with such pace and accuracy. Wow. Maybe Manny Trio. Remember Manny Trio? Absolutely. Manny Trio. Love Manny Trio. But yeah. I, I remember. He jumps out at me more when he's defending himself, making a turn Around in second, second base. base. Yeah. But making that play that Cano just made. And so fluid with it. That's, yeah, that's I remarkable. I can't think of anybody right now. Maybe, uh, oh, a little bit of um, Tony Fernandez used to do All that. Right, I'll give they you that. Do it from short. And then at second, he played some second right, for the late. Yankees later in his career. Right. Out of almost 18,000 guys who've ever played Major League Baseball, that's a pretty select company. <laughs> that's a small list, isn't it? <laughs> That's some play makes it look easy. It's fun to watch. That one hit up the middle for base hit. Off the bat of Alex Presley. He's two for two. Don't now let's see how he pitches to Mr. Springer. Get ahead of him. Springer hit a 2-0 fastball out of the ballpark. A two-run homer for him. We'll take a look at it. This is the 16th home run of the year for Springer. Did not start the season with the club, but he has had an impact. Towering home run out to left. Mm. The other home run Taiwan gave up was to Marwin Gonzalez. Two outs in the second. He was behind in that count, 2-0 oh as well. Springer and Brad Miller select teammates down in the state of Florida. Chatting before the game, there's 0 2 count now. Oh, like a similar pitch to the one that he hit out. And you can see the difference. 2 and 0. Oh, very aggressive. Hits the home run. And right now, 0 oh and 2 on a similar pitch at 94 miles an hour. He's really late on it, just trying to protect the plate. So hopefully, Taiwan can consistently stay ahead of the Houston Astros hitters. Strike oh, right three call. Paint job. Got him. Away. It's a good fastball and it is a strike. It's right at the bottom of the strike zone. <laughs> Frozen. What was that? I think he thought the pitch was down, but it mm -hmm. wasn't. It was a good pitch. There's John Singleton. 22 years old. Earlier this month, signed a five year contract with three club options. It looks at strike one. MLB.com and baseball prospectus top first base prospect in baseball. Struggled a little bit with the average, has some strikeouts, but you can see the four home runs showing some power. Big hack. 11 strikes in one ball thrown by Taiwan Walker in this half inning. He's handling two. 50th pitch coming up for Taiwan. Pitch out, nothing doing. Probably see that quite a bit over the next few days. Astros first in the American League in stolen bases. Big reason why is Altuve. He leads the American League with 36 steals. The percentage not bad either. 68 out of 87. 
Presley's three for three. And a one-two count here to Singleton. I know he's going to take care of it. And that'll do it. No runs a hit. No errors and a man left. Three complete here in Houston. Astros lead by one. Game that has already seen three home runs. We take a look at the Mariners calendar brought to you by Sleep Country USA. Two more games here in Houston. Day off Thursday in Chicago. Second City will be there for three days and then come home. And that will take us up to the All-Star break. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, Root Sports Crew here in Houston. Taiwan Walker making his 2014 Major League debut, battling against Colin McHugh. McHugh so far through three. Four strikeouts. He's walked three, giving up two runs on two hits. He hasn't been particularly sharp. You can see his splits. It's not what he's looking for. The Mariner so far just getting the two runs on the two run homer by Zanino. He walked Morrison, who will lead off right here, and then Zanino with his 12th home run of the year. Almost swings through. Strike one. Houston has the shift on with Morrison hitting. Skips up there. One one. Morrison, Zanino, and Saunders five, six, and seven for the Mariners. Almost coming off the DL back on the 10th of the month. That's a nice smother job by the shortstop. Did he get it? He did. That's Marlon Gonzalez. That's nice just a great, great play by Gonzalez. They had the shift on it. It looked as if Morrison was going to get a base hit. It's a firm ground ball, but he's able to glove it. It throws it from his knees to just get Morrison by about a half a step. Nice play. Didn't quit on it. Was a good enough athlete to make a strong, accurate throw from that position. Well, that was the key to it. He has a strong arm, but to make an accurate throw was the key to the play. Put the shift on. Now for Zanino. Mike with a home run on a 1 2 pitch with a man aboard in the second inning. Been one of the few Mariner hitters so far to be able to get on the curveball. That was a curveball from McHugh. Towering home run out to left. Felix likes it. Two to Mike. 
wrecking ball again. Might be able to make it, and he will. A strikeout wild pitch by McHugh. This is the hard curveball. We've seen a number of these. He will throw it in the dirt when he gets two strikes. And Castro, the catcher, not able to keep it in front of him. Fifth strikeout. Wild pitch is an Eno aboard for Michael Saunders, who walked and was caught stealing it back in the second inning. Ball one to Michael. Another American League West action. Angels White Sox in Chicago. They got rained out. Athletics 1-1. One, one. Bottom six. That's in Detroit. Saunders gets in the line. Deep to right. Goodbye. Upper tank home run for Michael Saunders. Mariners back in front. Four to three for Sundo, his fifth home run. RBI is 24 and 25. Gave it a ride. Been four home runs in this game so far. <laughs> Gave it a ride is right. Well back up into the seats into the second deck. Looked like McHugh tried to throw a cutter in on his hands. 91 miles an hour. Pitches up in the zone. Knew it right away. Wow. Two two run homers for the Mariners, Zanino and now Saunders. Well, they strike out wild pitch. Big play for the Mariners. Zanino striking out and able to get to first. Huge. Slicing drive left field. It is a fair ball. Ackley to second. And Hose digs it out. So Ackley breaks through. He breaks in 0 for 18. Let's take a look at it down the left field line. Ooh. And I can see Bo Porter, the manager of the Astros. He's just waiting. I think they're going to challenge this. Here he comes. Hard to tell from that look. The first look, it looked like it might have been foul. Going down to talk to Todd Titchener, third base umpire. And this was a better look. See if you can see some chalk. I'm not sure there's enough there to overturn it. For Dustin Eckley, you hope like heck this stands up. It breaks an 0 for 18. I just showed it up on the big screen. The crowd reacting. They think it was a foul ball. Just needs to get just a little bit of that <laughs> chop, <laughs> Dave, and he's that's okay. What, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Nobody wants it more than he does right now. Tim Welke, the crew chief, and Todd Titchener. Consulting with New York. Continue to throw, to stay warm. Aaron is back in front, 4 3, and a Michael Saunders two round homer. Take another look at it. I haven't seen anything to overturn it. It's hard rubber lining out there. It's not your chalk that you'd see. From uh, 
home plate area out through well, into just beyond the infield dirt. What's the word, boys? Foul ball. Foul ball. So yeah. actually have to get back. Houston's now been successful on nine of 16 challenges this year. He's got to get a work going too. Looks like they have a little better crowd here than what we've seen in the past. Yeah. Not been good previous visits. Blackley 0 and 2, nobody on. One out. Breaking ball. Struck him out, tag applied by Castro. Six strikeout for McHugh, two away. Here in the fourth inning. It never fails. You think you have a home run or you think you have a double and they call it foul and here you go. It seems like you always end up striking out. Another curveball in the dirt. Brings up Brad Miller. Popped up to the second baseman out to that. Orioles at home in Baltimore leading the Rangers seven to one top of the seventh inning. What about it, Brad? Well, the good news for the Mariners is not only have they put four runs on the scoreboard. This next pitch will be 70 for McHugh. Oh, Brad gets into one. Deep to right. Giddy up and gone. The teeing off on Colin McHugh. Third Mariner home run tonight. 5 3 Mariners. Eighth home run for Brad. His 23rd run batted in. This looked like a changeup, 86 miles an hour. A little cut fastball. Right in a two home run day here last year. John there, hasn't, there hasn't been a cheap home run yet. Not at all. You can hear John Buck leading them in. Can I get a woo woo? <laughs> They're playing good baseball. May as well have some fun. Already a good month for, for Brad. That's his fifth home run of the month. Roger that. Third home run he's hit here in this building. Indy Chavez, line drive, going back. Presley, he's there to make the catch. Couple of long balls here in the fourth inning. Good sign for the Mariners who have a 5 3 lead.
Boys have hit three home runs here tonight. First game of three against Houston. And hey, fellas, make sure Safeco Field is your man cave on Friday, July 11th for EQC Guys Night Out. When you purchase a specially priced ticket for 25 bucks, you're going to score a main level ticket. First drink plus a Mariners Red Party Cup. Enjoy rock music throughout the Mariners A's game, courtesy of KISW. Tickets to Guys Night Out, they're available at Mariners.com slash guys. Matt Dominguez will lead off here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Dominguez hit into a double play his first time up. 5-4-3 double play. Taiwan Walker in his 2014 debut has got the lead for the first time. Well, if you like home runs, you'd like this game. Five home runs. Three of them by the Mariners in the game so far. All eight runs via home runs. Mike Zanino on the left, a two-run shot. Second inning, Brad Miller in the fourth, a solo blast. And there's a strike call, three and one. Michael Saunders. Saunders with his fifth home run, Miller with his eighth, and Zanino with his twelfth. Coming into the game, Houston fourth in the American League in home runs. Mariners trying to move their way up ninth. It's ninth in home runs, so they're hopefully move up again. Takes them from 68 to 71. Three home runs today. Here's the angle from Comcast Houston. This is what they use to overturn the, the, the double, the space between the bar and the ball and the white line. There it is. Another strike to Dominguez. Full count. Taiwan tonight. Two strikeouts and one walk. Five three Mariner lead as we play in the bottom of the fourth. A breaking ball. It's going to be a dump shot that's going to work. Base hit for Dominguez leading off the home fourth. Here's Brad Adam. Brad, thank you. Not surprised to hear Miggy breaking out after he went 0 for 13 down here in Houston. Momo challenges, makes a good strong throw. Brad Miller back. Oh, Taiwan couldn't dig it. They almost had the 3 6 1 double play. Nice attack there by Logan Morrison. Well, they have a chance because Logan is aggressive. He comes in and gets this right away. Also gives him a good angle to throw the ball down into second base. And Brad waits for Walker. Would have been a close play, but Taiwan not able to hold on to it. One out, one on. He was stretching out there, too. He probably played some first base back in his day. Well, I've seen the video of him dunking. He is an outstanding athlete. <laughs> seen him run. He's, he's unusual. He is just outstanding. There's Jesus Guzman. Taiwan struck him out with a curveball back in the second inning.
been inconsistent with the arm speed with the breaking ball. He's been well, some good ones, been some bad ones. Yeah, you know, we have to remember he's not a finished product right now. He's mm -hmm. here just because he's so talented, and he those are things that Rick Waits will work with him on, and he'll get better. Seeger in a line drive, quick release. Back safely is Dominguez. Well, they have to remember too that these guys really haven't. It's a new coaching staff. They really haven't seen much of Walker Kyle. Was able to get a double play on a similar play yesterday at home. Better base running by Castro. But this is really the first time they're going to get a chance to see Walker pitch. Absolutely. And, and they'll make their adjustments as he moves on. I think the only. You know, Lloyd said the only time he had seen him was pitching in a backfield against the minor leaguers. I, I think the guy that probably has any experience at all with him would be Jason Phillips. The bullpen catcher. Jason catcher with. Number of big league clubs here with the team and has been here for a while now. Them last year. Yeah. He is a talented young man, but he, he has some work to do. On a 2 0 pitch, Gonzalez hit a home run off the right field foul pole. Two outs met at first and an 0 1 count. Left field back with is at the spot makes the catch that'll do it. No runs. A hit, no errors, and a man left. Taiwan Walker and the Mariners lead it five to three. Game Mariners lead it five to three. You can have anything you want, big guy. Go for it. Snow cone, good choice. Well, maybe some cotton candy. Century Link, Link to what's next? The other two games in this series: Say Kuma tomorrow against Jared Cosart, then Chris Young against Brad Peacock. Mariners number two in ERA on the Oakland Athletics in the American League. That one point is all encompassing. That's a dig deep. There's your pitcher comparison. Thank you. It allowed five home runs in 72 and a third innings coming in tonight. Three home runs in four innings. Well, he's had to throw a lot of pitches to work through four innings so far. 72 pitches. There's James Jones to lead it off one for two, and he stole second and third back in the third inning. And strike one. And that will move him in the top 10 in steals in the American League. And what did you say? He spotted him a month. He spotted him a month. Oh, wow. That's impressive. One. Breaking ball. In there for strike two. Jones, Robinson, Cano, and Kyle Seeger. Here in the fifth. He's done some work already. A couple of head first slides, getting those two, two bags. 
That's a base hit to right. And James Jones two for three. And that's a good two strike hitting. Gets a curveball. It's been a problem for the Mariners, but he's able to find a hole through the right side. Here's Cano. Fly deep to center and struck out. Curveball got him in third inning. Jones two for two tonight base stealing. He's only been caught once since being called up. Sixteen out of seventeen. Is going to have 16 homers in their last 10 games. On a one in the canoe. Home run for Brad Miller gives him eight. He's now tied atop the American League list of shortstops with Cabrera, Estrubal Cabrera of Cleveland, and uh, Lexi Ramirez of the White Sox. Coming in, the left fielder hose, long run, but he's there plenty of time. Who knows he tired. One out. I'll bring up Kyle Seeger. He struck out twice tonight. What's his approach coming into this one? He got him well, on an 0-2 and a 3-2. Yeah, he's he's basically thrown him high fastballs right around the top of the strike zone and then buried the curveball on Kyle. And Kyle, I think it was in his last at bat, he was ahead in the count 2 0, I believe, and he had a fastball up out over the plate. Put a good swing on it, fouled it back. But I think his key is going to try to get on that fastball early if he can. Home runs tonight for the Mariners. Mike Zanino a two run shot in the second. Saunders a two run blast in the fourth. And then out later, Brad Miller went deep. Three home runs accounting for the five Mariner runs on the board. Home runs for Springer, two run shot for Houston in the first. And Gonzalez, the solo homer in the second. Jones is starting to get a really big lead over at first, so he's feeling comfortable getting back in plenty of time. That's not it. He'll take some more. There you go. Pretty good lead. Go Great on, jump. Go Anderson popped foul by Seager. And that was the fastball that Kyle wanted. It was a fastball out over the plate, elevated again towards the top of the strike zone. And Castro would not have had any chance to throw Jones. That was a huge lead and a great jump by Jones. Well, he's in full gear quickly. Oh, and one. Close, Tim Timmons. Umpire first. Breaking ball. So two to Kyle. As we travel around the American League, all the fields are different and 
And so were the cutouts on the infield and this cutout here it, that's a pretty wide cutout. So if you're able to get your right foot out towards the where the edge of that cut is that's a big lead. And that's he's getting a little bit more even. Getting into Ricky territory. That's out there. It used to be fairly simple with all the AstroTurf fields. The guys would just want to get one foot on the carpet. I think if this was one of those turf fields, he'd have both feet out on the carpet <laughs> right now. O2 to Seeger. Fouls it off. And you can see a couple of elevated fastballs, and now he goes to the curveball. That one off the plate. I think he tried to bounce it up there and left it up a little bit so the foul could foul it off. Jones is 16 stolen bases, second among rookies to the Reds. Billy Hamilton has got 34. There's an 0-2. There it goes. Go Pitch out off the glove. He can. Let's see if he'll get up. Nope. He'll hold right there. A little bit of a deep job there by the shortstop Gonzalez. Another stolen base for James Jones. Well, even though it's a pitch out, the, the pitch is high. Castro knows that he has to get rid of it quickly. Goes right off the end of his glove, right off the webbing. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, that's a poor pitch out right there. How much he could do. And another stolen base for Jones. 17 out of 18 now. I give him credit for getting his glove on that one, too. Yeah, that, that was poor. Right. So Jones in scoring position. Seeger battling here, one and two. Seager trying to put another run on the board for the Mariners here. One and two count. I saw the ball go to the backstop. Curtis was asking me if Donnelly, the third base coach, could yell at Jones to let him know not to slide. And yes, he can do that, but when you're stealing a base like that, I doubt that he would ever hear him. And you pretty much have made up your mind once you go what you're going to do, and that is slide foul to the pitch well out of strike zone. So I, even though I'm sure that Donnelly was trying to get his attention, everything happened so quickly, I doubt that, that Jones would have changed his mind. The one thing you don't want to do is start to slide, then not slide. The next thing you know, you have some sort of leg injury. Let's go ahead and dive in there and then get up as quickly as you can. So Seeger strikes out for the third time. Two outs here in the fifth. Mariners 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position. The good news is they've hit three home runs tonight. Here's Logan Morrison. Walk run scored. And robbed of a base hit by the shortstop Gonzalez. So breaking ball. That's Andy Van Slyke. Andy sent Scott. He pulled the old hot foot on him last night in the Dodger game. I don't know if you saw that, but it was I a did. beauty. Junior. Ken Griffey Jr. would have been proud. That's how good it was. <laughs> Andy said he had not spoken to Scott yet, but they give him, give him the needle. Scott gave the hot foot. No, he got it. He was a victim. Yeah. Oh boy, they got him good. He had no idea. God, you're surging in that National League West. Go on to Morrison. Dodgers made up a lot of ground. They were about nine, ten games out. They start today tied with the Giants. I saw that Bruce Bochy pulled his closer. Going to go by Romo. committee. Yeah, yeah, Romo took him out of there. One and one to Logan Morris. Off that breaking ball. He's a totally different hitter. That 
think you mentioned a few other people mentioned that that playing every day in the rehab down at Tacoma has meant so I, much I, to him. I, I, yeah, I talked to him about it right before we were leaving the homestand. I was asking Logan about it, and he said that it made a difference for him and, and basically just getting himself in a better position because he was playing every day when he was on his rehab. And since being called up, he went right into the lineup because Smoke went on the DL, and it's helped a bunch. You could tell just the way he strides and how relaxed he is up there. He's not chasing nearly as many pitches, and that was one of the things he was talking to me about is just trying to get a pitch in the strike zone and hit it hard, and he, he's been doing that. It's looked good, though, too. Nine for 21 on the homestand. And they're just going to put him on. Intentional walk here. Runners at first and second. And then I'll bring up Mike Zanino. Tune in tomorrow when the Mariners face the Astros for the second game of this three game series. Action begins with the pregame show starting at 4 30 p.m., followed by first pitch at 5 10. Then all Tuesday games. Remember this season, they're presented by T Mobile. Brings up Mike Zanino. Two run homer on a 1 2 pitch. In the second inning, that tied it up. And he was a strikeout victim, but a wild pitch got him to first instead of the second out. He was on board when Saunders hit a home run, a two run shot in that fourth inning. Castro's earning it here in this inning. Record for stolen bases in the game for the Mariners is four. Been done six times. Right now, Jones has three, most recently by Ichiro in 2010. Ichiro's done it twice. Some good names Mark McLemore, Henry Cotto, Harold Reynolds, and Julio Cruz. Nice. Yeah. Another strike to Zanino. Got to get a work here, one and two. Sanders on that two on here for Zanino with two outs. Arna goes. Breaking ball swung on a miss. He had it again, too. Sure he did. The Mariners lead two stranded in the top of the fifth and lead 5-3.
All right, thank you. Taiwan Walker, first pitch strike to LJ Hose, batting in the nine hole, their left fielder, followed by Jose Altuve and Alex Presley. 0 oh 2 here. Hose, first time. Taiwan made a nice play to throw him out on a little swinging bunt that went down the third base line. I'm innocent of the great play he made here last year in his debut. Watching Walker tonight, he's had the good fastball. Stopped out at 96 miles an hour. You see 67 pitches for him so far. His curveball has been inconsistent. He's thrown some really good ones and some poor ones. I think his changeup has been pretty good today. He's thrown some good changeups to the left handed hitters. Talk about being late. A big full swing. Uh, you can see the potential Walker. My goodness. We we're talking about his fastball that last one at 95. It, you can tell that it's getting on these hitters in a hurry. Only time he's been in any trouble with it is when he's been behind in the count. They're going to be a little more aggressive. That was a change up in the third. Making his 2014 debut turns 22 in in August. Will they have him on the mound? Oh. Struck him out. Strikeout number three for Taiwan Walker. Well, he elevates a fastball again at 96 miles an hour, and not much of a chance for Hose to get anywhere near it. And you can take a look at this swing. He knows he's beat by the fastball. Tried to hold up, ends up going down to one knee. But uh, a run on that too. Mm. Good running fastball. One out. Brings up the American League's leading hitter, Jose Altuve. So far, Walker's held him in check. A couple of bounce outs to Cano. Oh, that had to really hurt. It yes. sounded like it hit him right on the elbow. Oh, boy. 94 mile an hour fastball. Yeah. That one hurt. Mm. This could not get out of the way. He certainly didn't do it on purpose. No. You don't want to put Altuve on. He leads the league in stolen bases. 23 consecutive stolen bases for Altuve. Reminder that this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Seattle Mariners. Altuve trying to shake it off going down to first base. Rick waits. Quick conference. He and Zanino in Taiwan. Alex Presley Presley having a good evening two for two Presley the center fielder having a two hole single twice to center Rams have turned one double play tonight Went around the horn to end the first inning Walker comes set first pitch to Presley in there for a strike. So Altuve has the one steal in six consecutive games of franchise record. Kobe Ellsbury is the last one to do that. Did that last year with the Red Sox. No play for Atkins. One of the things we've seen with Altuve, you have to make him stop. He won't go out there and get a huge lead right away, but he'll just continue to walk off the base and try to time, to try to time the pitcher and take off running. So I think for Walker, he'll probably have to hold the ball a little bit longer to make him stop. It seems I don't know what he does the rest of the season, but it seems at times when the Mariners see him, he's gone first, second pitch. 
Well, I'm sure that he does that all the time. He's a good player. Stop by Mike. Dominic Leo. Only got for the Mariners. Walker at 75 pitches now, 47 strikes. There's Dominic. Cubs Jake Arrieta took a no hitter into the eighth inning, striking out nine through seven. Cubs lead it two nothing, top of the ninth. And as you see Dominic getting loose here in the fifth inning, the Mariners still with the extra arm in their pen. Mauer still here with the club. Romero ended up sent out when Walker was activated to get the start tonight. Good pitch. Now another good changeup. The changeup has been really good to the left-handers. Strikeout number four for Taiwan. So two down here in the fifth. That'll bring up George Springer, who had a monster home run on a 2-1, 2-0 pitch. In the first inning, they gave Houston an early lead. Mariners answered with the Zanino home run. Houston came right back, regained the lead on a home run by Gonzalez. And in the fourth, the Mariners hit two home runs. Saunders a two run shot, and Miller a solo homer for the 5 3 lead. You mentioned Springer hitting the 2 0 pitch out of the ballpark. His next at bat, Taiwan Walker was able to strike him out looking. He was able to work ahead and made a good pitch with a fastball down at the bottom of the strike zone. Breaking ball, ball one. Sixteen home runs by Springer before the All Star break, a rookie record. Lance Berkman. At 12, that was a prior record for the All Star break back in 2000. Looked inside, 2 0. Tuve runs. Throw by Zanino. That was a great example of what I was talking about. He never stopped him and he was able to time it perfectly. In fact, I think he took off running before Walker even started towards home to get himself into scoring position. Watch him take off early. Don't stop him and off he goes. 24 consecutive steals. I think you need to throw over there every now and then, but if you just hold the ball, I think you can keep him. In place, and that time Walker concentrated on the hitter for good reason. Springer already with a home run, but Altuve was able to steal that off of Walker. First Houston runner in scoring position tonight. Well, Coom uh, Cano, he's going to be looks like a, he'll be starting the uh, All Star break, and Altuve is certainly going to make the ball club as the leading hitter in the American League. Meanwhile, a 2 1 count to George Springer. Take a look at the slide by Altuve. A late slide goes in over the bag. Look how he catches his toe on the front edge of the base. Uh, twist an ankle doing that. Mm. Groin hip. Not a great athlete. Prime, that can be problematic. There's a breaking ball at upstairs, two and two. Two outs with Altuve at second. Springer representing the tying run. It's time. Air down here. Long look by Walker. Springer backs out.
was two and uh, three and two. What do you think he comes back with here? Well, I think that conversation came down to Zanino, and whatever it is that he's going to throw, I think Mike wanted to make sure that he throws it with conviction. It's a breaking ball. I don't, he doesn't want him to just roll it up there. I'm sure they want to throw a fastball away, but you want your pitcher to be comfortable with whatever it's going to be. Breaking, breaking ball. ball. And he did go. It's his home plate umpire, Clint Fagan. So Springer strikes out for the second time. Strands a runner at second. Here's another look. And he did get it out there. And Springer committed. That'll do it for the Astros in the fifth. Here in Houston. Make sure you jo uh, join us tomorrow night during the Mariners Astros game for Twitter Tuesday for an extra chance at winning. Here's what you do sign up for the Root Sports e Connect by visiting rootsports.com, where we're going to post an exclusive Twitter Tuesday question. For giveaway rules, visit us at rootsports.com. Mariners with a 5-3 lead. Michael Sunders last time up 1-0 count. A long two run homer upper deck right field. They put the Mariners in front 4-3. And Brad Miller made it 5-3. Two batters later. Oh, and two to Michael. Walked his first time up, was trying to steal, and was thrown out by Jason Castro back in the second inning. Yeah, again on that on that one, I, I think it was a hit and run. I wouldn't be surprised if Lloyd McClinton talks about it after the game and says it was a missed hit and run. It was, yeah, Ackley was at the dish. One and two. Stephen Drew broke up that Jake Arrieta no no bid in the eighth inning. Cubs leading the Red Sox. It's funny how this game works sometimes. We saw the Red Sox at home and Stephen Drew, he was really struggling. Oh. His batting average was in the 140s. He's the one that breaks up the no hitter. 100th pitch coming up for McHugh. Cubs leading that game 2 0, bottom nine at Fenway. Three and two to Saunders. Breaking ball. Hit the single, Tim will take it himself. One out here in the sixth inning. 
ride with all your fans on Sound Transit and enjoy freedom from traffic and parking. To plan your next trip. Visit SoundTransit.org. Dustin Ackley 0 for 2 tonight. Struck out twice. Ball one. Dustin thought he had a double his last time up. Hit it down the left field line. It was originally called there. Overturn. Tonight with four strikeouts. And he's walked three, one intention. One and two to Ackley. Ball two, two and two. Ackley to be followed by Brad Miller, who's one for two with a home run. He wasted that fastball up out of the strike zone on purpose, changing the eye level of Ackley. Probably comes back with a curveball in the dirt. Tuve rolls him out. Eight for three match for Ackley. Two away here in the sixth. If you has had a good curveball tonight. That was another one. I think again he wanted to bounce. He left it up enough to where Ackley could put it in play. Two outs and that'll bring up Brad Miller. Ball one to Brad. Take a look at the home run that he hit on a 1 1 pitch. And his eighth home run of the year. Now tied for the lead in the American League with American League shortstops and home runs with eight. Two balls and one strike. Ball popped up. This next pitch will be 110 for McHugh. Season most is 114 as we play here in the sixth. Giving up three home runs. Same guy that struck out 12 at Safeco Field back in April 22nd. Line drive left field hose going back. And he's got it. One, two, three to the Mariners in the sixth. Three time one Walker's coming back out. Looks like he's going to. He's got a 5 3 lead.
You know it. All right, guys, thank you so much. John Singleton leads off their cleanup man, followed by Matt Dominguez and Jason Castro, four, five, and six. Taiwan tonight has struck out five, walked one, giving up the two home runs. Not surprised to see him back out there. Just 84 pitches now for Walker. We saw Dominic Leone up last inning. And I think Lloyd McClendon was just going to make sure that he didn't get in any trouble. If he did, I think he would have pulled him. He was able to get himself out of it. You see Tom Wilhelmson getting loose now here at the start of this inning. Boy, power on power. Two and one. Mariners trying to hang on to a two run lead. Three balls, one strike. And he loses Singleton. Second time he's walked John. Kind of for both walks he's issued tonight. Brings up Matt Dominguez who bounced into a around the horn double play and single to left. I think if another hitter reaches, they'll probably go get him. As you can see, Rick Waits watching closely. Tom Wilhelmson getting loose. Tom's been really good his last couple of outings. Score was sitting on Saturday. And prior to that, he went three really good innings against Boston on Wednesday. Gave up two hits and struck out three. Going to Matt. Comebacker. Cano's there for one. And there's a double play. One, four, three, DP. Who's been impressive when he comes off the mound? We're talking about him being a good athlete. He also makes an accurate throw again. Sometimes young pitchers will get excited to get this ball right away and basically hits Cano right in the chest with an easy turn for Cano. It's two double plays tonight and they just missed a one. Was it a one three six? A three, a three, six, one double play. Beg your pardon. Taiwan couldn't hold on to a, throws a little bit low. And he is now at 90 pitches, so this will probably be his last inning. And Dominguez is grounded in at two double plays here tonight. Pitch outside. One on one to Jason Castro. He's 0 for 2. Grounded out the first week, stone of fielder's choice. Another change up. He's done a good job of keeping that change up down. He hasn't had too many up in the zone. He's so given up the home run to Gonzalez in the second. He's given up no runs, two hits over the last four innings. Nice work. Breaking ball gets fouled off. Better curve ball again. Oh, two strikes. Strike three called. Got him. Taiwan Walker finishes the six with the flourish with his sixth strikeout. 
six in the books for Taiwan in his 2014 debut in a 5-3 lead. Seattle Mariners. Five three, Mariners on top. They've hit three home runs tonight. Houston's hit two. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, Root Sports crew, and we're glad that you're with us here tonight as Josh Zide takes over the mound for the Astros. Mariners able to run. Colin McHugh, so Zide will take over. And for Zide, 16th appearance on the year. No record for him, a 3.86 ERA. 12 strikeouts in 14 innings. Opponents hitting 3.02. He's given up three home runs this year. With two thirds of scoreless inning Saturday against Detroit. Worked out of a bases loaded jam. Well, this is where you'd like to see the Mariners score a few more runs. The bullpen for the Astros has been a struggle, a 4.70 ERA for their pen. Mariners top of the order with Chavez, Jones and Cano do up. Found back by Indy. And for Colin McHugh, six innings, five hits, five runs, all of them earned. He had four walks, eight strikeouts, 110 pitches, 64 for strikes. He had three home runs. Indy lays down a bun. It's going to stay fair. Indy's got a base hit. Beauty. Good start to the top of the seventh. With that punt base hit, Indy now one for three in the game. Perfect punt right down the line. Is able to keep it on the grass so it doesn't roll foul. Martin brings up James Jones. Two hits in his last two at bats and in. Result has stolen three bases last two times he's been on base. Three stolen bases tonight for James. 17 out of 18 on the season. One to count. Mm -hmm. 
good run on that one. 95 miles an hour, one and two. One, two. And he gets it past Singleton. Indy was able to get over it. Indy will get the third. Jones with the big turn. The Mariners in business here starting the seventh inning. Runners at the corners. James Jones, three hits in his last three at bats. Three for four night. And he hits it hard. It looks like a breaking ball down and in. And he hits it hard past Singleton, the first baseman. Fortunately, it misses Indy. And he has to get that foot off the ground just in time. Still able to get around the third, so a great situation for the Mariners. First and third with nobody out, and their best hitter due up. That brings up Cano. Robbie tonight fly deep to center, struck out, flied out to left field. Cano starting tonight fourth in batting average, tied for sixth in hits, third in road batting average, and second to. Miguel Cabrera. Runners in scoring position batting average. 367. Well, the Mariners came into the game fourth in the American League with a team 266 average tonight 0 for 5 all their scoring coming on home runs. They hit three home runs tonight. Two run homer by Zanino a two run homer by Saunders and a solo shot by Miller. Two and oh. Not surprised to see Castro go out to speak to Josh Zide. Josh had a New Haven, Connecticut, lives here in Houston. Came over from the Phillies with Jared Cosart, Jonathan Singleton, and Hunter Pence trade back in July of 2011. No, two no. It's a deep to left. Got some carry. Gone. Three run homer. Just served that baby up there. Three run jack for Cano. Eight three Mariners. Fourth home run tonight. And for Robbie, his sixth home run takes his RBI count to 48. Well, he's homered in back to back games. He had a two run homer last night. Now a three run home run. As we're rolling into July, you hope that he's heating up and starting to hit the long ball. He's been a great hitter for the Mariners all year, but now starting to show some power. He knew it when he hit it. Two oh count. Made side pay for it. All runs scored tonight in this ball game via the home run. Seager trying to join the parade. He struck out three times. You know, with a home run yesterday on a 2 0 count, tied the game, actually put the Mariners ahead 2 0, breaking a scoreless tie. And here he extends the lead to 8 3. Mariners have now hit 72 home runs on the year. They were ninth in the American League at the start of today. Three fifteen. And that scoreboard in left field. It's not get, getting it high enough, and Cano did that at plenty to spare. Three quick runs for the Mariners, starting with a bunt base hit from Chavez. Jones, his third base base hit of the game, and of course the home run by Cano. Two and two. And I'm ducking. 
and Astro dugout. Chopper. Drive. Throw out Seeger for out number one. Three runs in here in the seventh inning. There's big lead. 8-3. Vote for Cano. You just got another example why you should cast your ballot. Send the Mariners second baseman to the All-Star game in Minnesota. When you vote Cano at Mariners.com slash vote, you're going to automatically be entered to win a Yes We Cano signed t-shirt by Ravi himself. Both 30 or more times, and you're going to have a chance to meet the five-time All-Star. For official rules and to vote Cano, log on to Mariners.com slash vote. Logan Morrison hits it hard. Center field and making the catch. The ball started to knuckle. Presley's there, two away. To the bat in that he hit it hard. Keep him on that ball. Century Link Link to what's next. He will come and start tomorrow and Young and Peacock coming up on Wednesday. Another night game and then a day game. Our coverage begins Wednesday. See you at 10 30. Mike Zanino. Two run homer in the second. Struck out but reached first in a wild pitch in the fourth, scored on a Saunders home run and then struck out in the fifth. Season best four home runs in one game by the Mariners. One and two. And it looks like it will be Tom to pitch the bottom of the seventh inning. One and two. Coming in, Presley's there to make the catch. Big excitement in the seventh. A three run homer by Cano. His second home run in as many days, and the Mariners have an 8 3 lead. Brought to you by Washington's Lottery and the Department of Imagination. What would you do if you won? Seventh inning stretch. We're in Houston. They're playing deep in the heart of Texas. What else would you expect? 
Mariner baseball, 8-3 lead. And Taiwan Walker and Mariners have staked him to a big lead. And he turned in some good work. He did. He gives up a two-run home run in the first inning on a 2-0 pitch. Ball behind Springer. And you start to see him go to work. Here's another 2-0 pitch hit out for home. And this one a solo shot. And after that, Walker settled down. Good fastball at the bottom of the strike zone. There's another elevated fastball. How about a changeup from Walker? And then the curveball. So overall, I think it was a good night for him. Made a couple of mistakes when he fell behind, but other than that, really good. Six innings, five hits, three runs, all of them are. He did give up the two homers. Two walks, six strikeouts, 94 pitches, 56 of those for strikes. I think it's a good first outing for the young man going six innings. And he's got to love the fact that he gets a big boy run support. A four home run night, best home run night of the season for the Mariners. And that always helps. Tom will take over now. No record for Tom, excuse me, 0 1 record for Tom. 257 ERA, 38 strikeouts in 42 innings. Opponents hitting just 195 off of Tom. Good fastball, 95 to 97 miles an hour. Also mixing in a cutter from time to time. Curveball, 12 6 curveball, and a changeup. And he has pitched well here. Six games, just a 1 3 5 ERA at Minute Maid Park. Strike one to Jesus Guzman a minute ago. Rajay Davis just hit a game winning grand slam for Detroit to beat the Athletics 5 4. Strike two here to Guzman, who struck out and lined out the third. Pretty good curveball. A little bit of an emergency hack from Guzman. Oh, two. Well, Hampson. Ground ball hit to Cano. Easy play there throughout Guzman. One down. Mariner coaching staff, they just got to be thrilled to get this performance out of Taiwan Walker in his first game here in 2014. Well, I think the other part of it, too, Lloyd McClendon getting to see him pitch for the first time and making some adjustments with the young man. Be interested to see what his thoughts are after the game. There's Marvin Gonzalez. I know getting some action tonight. <laughs> Reminded me, you know, like made him run there. He could have thrown it a lot quicker. But just reminded me of some old bits. Yeah, go ahead, run, run, run. Then he finally threw the guy out. He's on his own clock right now. As well, hey, you know what? <laughs> no objection. I but I just get a tickle out of it. I mean, <laughs> it took his time and he made him just bust it down the line. Two outs, seven assists this evening for Mr. Cano. A three run homer for Robbie in the top of the seventh. Break it open. The hitters LJ Ho is tapped back to Taiwan Walker and struck out. He's 0 for 2. Boy, Tom bringing it tonight. Good fastball at 96 right on the outside corner. And one. Two on the hose. Two two. Easy play for Saunders. How about this Mariner pitching? Tom just continues it here in the seventh. Nice job going one, two, three. Felt the Astros hitless over the last three innings. Mariners lead it eight to three.
The Mariners have an 8-3 lead. They've hit four home runs tonight. Zanino, Saunders, Miller, and Cano. First game of three. As the Mariners continue to uh, improve as we go along here in the season. New pitcher Jerome Williams. It's been a struggle for him. One and four record, 5-9-1 ERA, 36 strikeouts, 15 walks. Opponent sitting 299. He's given up seven home runs this year. And he will get Saunders, Ackley, and Miller all due up. James gave up a big home run to Kinsler on Saturday when Detroit was in here when Detroit won its only game in a three game series. Saunders having a good night. One for two but that one hit a two run home run. He's also walked. Saunders fifth home run and. Might be the best ball he's hit in terms of the home runs in terms of distance and how hard he hit it. There was well back up into the seats in the second deck here. Very impressive. Williams, a former starter. Saunders has seen plenty of Jerome over the last few years. Michael, seven for 20 against him. One and two here to Saunders. Anyway, Chase. Wait. He's up Dustin Ackley over three tonight. Couple of strikeouts and the ground out the second. Oh, one to Dustin. Way outside again, two and zero. Oh. That's a good count. See if he can get a fastball in the middle of the plate and hit it hard. Two and one. He did ninety miles an hour right down the middle. Two one. Count even to two and two. Rackley's got a full count here. One out, nobody on. This county's run here tonight. Like three call. Two down. Jerome Williams strikes out the first two men that he faces. And you beat the best. Join millions of players right now for the only official home run derby mobile game from MLB.com. Square off against your friend from around the world live in multiplayer derby mode and climb to the top of the leaderboards. Download today for free on the Apple App Store and Google Play. This is fouled off by Brad Miller. 
two outs here in the eighth. Brad one for three. In his eighth home run. Back in the fourth inning. Looks like Tom's going to come out and pitch in the eighth inning. Really good in the bottom of the seventh, the one, two, three, seventh for Tom. Nobody getting loose in the pen. O2 pitch. No play for third baseman Matt Dominguez. Side, Brad. It looked like Castro wanted that pitch. Mm -hmm. It was close. Good two seam fastball from Will Williams, starting it in off the plate, trying to run it back on the corner. Eight three, Mariner lead. One and two, two out, nobody on. Hits a two out two though. There's a singleton that'll do it for the Mariners. A quiet eighth inning. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Ron Hobson will have out two. Bay Presley and Springer one, two, three in the Houston batting order. Eight three Mariner lead. All right, Brad, thank you. Here's Jose Altuve to lead off against Tom Wilhelmson. Chops him up the plate. Tom throws him out. Boy, they held him in check tonight. Altuve, leading hitter in the American League, 0 for 3, and was hit by a pitch. He did steal a bag. His 24th consecutive and his 37th on the season. Has that ever happened? The Mariners holding him in check. It seems like he's always on base. Isn't that the truth? Yeah, he's a good player. 
Good job by the pitching staff tonight. Brings up Alex Presley. Two for three, run scored. If by chance you're just joining us, Taiwan Walker looked good in the six innings of five hit three run work, two walks, six K's in his 2014 debut. On the ground ball, Cano will get his eighth assist tonight, two away. George Springer. Springer, a monster two run homer in the first inning. Since then, he struck out looking and swinging. Ball one. You know, it looked like Tom doesn't throw a lot of cutters, but that was a cut fastball at 91. Tried to throw it off the outside corner and spiked it. Well, I'm sitting at a three inning stint, stint against Boston. Look really good. It's Saturday. Cleveland won the game 5 0, but Tom had a strong one inning of work. A couple of close pitches, and he can't get the call. Out back in the third. Three and one. Oh, Tommy battled back to three balls and two strikes. Three Mariner lead. Three two here. Will Helmson to Springer. Breaking ball missed. Tom retired the first five men that he faced. Now a walk. Springer with two outs in the eighth inning. For whatever the occasion, birthday, entertaining, clients, anniversary, or just catching up with friends, consider a safe cold field suite for your next event. Customize the space. And the menu when you purchase your premium seating at the ballpark. For more info on booking a suite this season, including opening night, visit mariners.com slash premium. John Singleton, the hitter. Springer takes off, gets second standing up. The stolen base for Springer. Third of the year, Singleton. Got a 1 0 count. Sanctions walked twice and grounded out to Cano. Two guys don't cheat themselves, do they? No, they don't. It's a good fastball from Tom. 96 miles an hour at the top of the strike zone. Able to throw it by Singleton. One count. Ball and two strikes. Four home run night for the Mariners. Sonito Saunders, Miller, and Cano. Cano, big three run blast to stretch his lead out to eight three. Flashy Akuma hopes to get that kind of support tomorrow. Morrison will take it. Tom Wilhelmson, two really good innings. Nice work. 
Wow, just one base runner via the walk. Eight three Mariners. Ball game. How about the four home runs, Mike? You have to like the power from the Mariners. From a lot of the young hitters, too. Zanino, his 12th home run of the year, now tied for the team lead. How about Michael Saunders? Welcome back. A two run homer for Michael up into the second deck. His fifth home run of the year. Brad Miller, solo home run, his eighth. And then Robinson Cano, this is the big one. Three run homer to left field. He's homered in back to back games now and put this one just about out of reach. Top of the ninth, Indy Chavez to lead off. Got that seventh inning started, dropped the bunt down to third baseline. Jones followed with the base hit to right, and then Cano hit the three run blast. One for three night for Indy with a walk. Two balls, one strike to Indy Chavez. Still nobody throwing in the Mariner pen. I wonder if Tom's going to come out and pitch a third inning. Why not? That'd be good. Look good against Boston. He hasn't thrown many pitches. I think just 23 pitches for him so far. 2 1. Pounds it down to Altuve. One away here in the Mariner's ninth. Now, if you think. You're an ultimate fan from the state of Montana, then you only have until midnight tonight to enter because we're moving on to Alaska tomorrow. Send us your photo using uh, and the story using hashtag ultimate NW fan MT on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or by email at ultimate fan at rootsports.com. You can win a VIP trip for two to Seattle in September, personalized jersey, and more. So the official rules they tell you go to rootsports.com. Jones it with hits in his last three at bats, a three for four night. He's stolen three bases, scored a run.
Jonesy, what a night. Four consecutive hits. And that coming on an 0-2 pitch. The last time in a 1-2 pitch. We talked about it with James. He doesn't try to do too much. This pitch is down in the zone, probably down out of the strike zone. But he's able to stay with this breaking ball and slaps it right back up the middle. Career best four hit night. Gonna bring up Robinson Cano. Cano one for four tonight. But that one hit a three run homer. And he's homered in back to back games now. It's good to see. Oh. A bullet center field. Oh, oh man. Impressive. And the Mariners now with 10 hits in the game. Good fastball in the outside corner at the knees, right where Williams wanted to throw it, and Cano lines it right past his hat. That's hitting the ball hard tonight. Man, oh man, Cano. Finished with two hits yesterday. And he's got two more here tonight. Two for five. So he's heating up after that 0 for 14. That's his average back to 320 now with the two hits tonight. Seeger wants some of that action. One out, two on. Kylo for four with three strikeouts. Kyle looks at ball too. That Rajay Davis walk off grand slam a super slam. 5 4 win for Detroit. Walk off grand slam and win by one. Babe Ruth the first to do it in 1925. 2 0 to Seeger. Down runs a 3 0. Bill Bradley did it for the Mariners in 1985 a Super Slam. And then Chris Hoyles got Norm Charlton in 1996. Hoyles with the Orioles did it to the Mariners. 3 0 here to Kyle. And he's aboard. Bases are loaded here for Logan Morrison. Oh, there's nobody throwing in the Astros' pen. Logan Morrison do up Logan 0 for 2 as a couple of walks his last time up. He hit it right on the button, but it was at the center fielder for an out. So he'll get a chance to drive in a run with just one out here in the ninth inning. Speaking of slams, why not? Mariners with four home runs in the game. I'm in. I'm in. A solo shot, a couple of two run homers, and a three run homer. Mariners looking for their first salami of the season. Strike. Eight runs on ten hits for the Mariners. Three runs, five hits for Houston. Mariners have left four men on base. Same number as Houston. A one. Fine drive center field. That'll score Jones. Stop sign for Cano. Nine three Mariners. Logan Morris and Lomo picking up an RBI. His eleventh. In his limited action. First hit tonight after walking twice. Rounding out and flying out the center. Yeah, with this base hit, another line drive back up the middle. Pitches down and away. Good hitting from Morrison. Jones will score his second run of the game. First run tonight did not that did not come via the home run. Bring up Mike Zanino. Zanino tonight. 
one for four and scored a couple of runs and also hit a home run. Now tied with Kyle Seeger for the team lead with 12. Mariners with 72 home runs as a team. Coming into the game, they were ninth in the American League in home runs. Strike one to Mike Zanino. James Jones with his four hits has jumped from 275 to 290. Batting average. Strike two to Zanino. Did for Tim Timmons one and two for a couple of quick strikes elevates a fastball tries to get him to chase it and he's able to just hold up. One and two of the bases loaded one out run in. Ball that is fair. Throw by Dominguez. Just gets Zanino. Cano scores on the play. A 10 3 Mariner lead. Michael pick up his, yeah, Mike picks up his third RBI of the game. And a good play by Dominguez right over the bag down the line. Gets rid of it quickly with something on it. Mariners now with their 10th run. 11 hits, 10 runs for the Mariners. Saunders so trying to add to the total here. 10 3 lead. Strike one to Michael. He was Jerome Williams' first batter in the eighth inning and struck out on a one two pitch. Fifth time the Mariners have scored 10 or more runs this season. Scored 12 against Boston last week. Prior to that, Beat the Yankees 10 2 at Yankee Stadium. That was the makeup game at the beginning of the month on June 2nd. 35 pitches now for Williams. Saunders hits it hard left field, but Hose is there. Rams get two more runs on three hits and leave a couple. Ten three lead.
Ten runs on 11 hits. Big lead here as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning in Houston. Century Lake Link to what's next coming up tomorrow. Sashi Iwakumi looking to get back on track. It's Jared Cosart, Chris Young, Brad Peacock will wrap up this series. Afternoon tilt here on Wednesday. I'm Will Helmson. Third inning of work for big time. Got Matt Dominguez, Jason Castro, and Jesus Guzman, five, six, and seven here in the bottom of the ninth. Dominguez got caught midway there, strike two. And the Astros just five hits in this game tonight, and none over the last four innings. Good stuff. From Taiwan Walker. Tom Will helps him up the middle. You know, four out, number one. It's his ninth assist tonight. I'll well, see if Tom can help him out. Go to double digits. Good ground ball right here. Castro, the left handed hitter, do up. The initials TW certainly loom large for the Mariners tonight. Taiwan Walker now Wilhelmson. Tommy coming on in the seventh inning. That was Tom's best fastball at 97 miles an hour. Another good one. Home runs tonight for the Mariners. Mike Zanino tied it up in the second inning. Michael Saunders put him ahead for good. Brad Miller hit a home run, part of a three run fourth. And then Robinson Cano, a big three run blast in the seventh inning. And with all the home runs, let's not forget about James Jones. Four hits tonight for Jones and three stolen bases. Last one, the last Mariner to do that was Ichiro back on July 20th, 2004. Going four for five with four bags. The only other Mariner player to record four hits and three stolen bases in a game. 3 1 count. Cash goes aboard. James Jones, a fantastic net. It started out with a fly to left, and then since then, single to left, single to right, single to right, single to center. He scored two runs, stole three bases. Make a trip out to the mound, try to get Tom back in the strike zone. He's been cruising along, but in a tough time right now. Just 31 pitches working his third inning. Head hard down the line, fair ball. Castro to third to hold him there. Guzman with a double, his fourth of the season. Well, figuring that Tom would throw a fastball after missing with the first pitch. He jumps on a 96 mile an hour fastball. Rick Waits, the pitching coach, making a trip out to the mound. We're going to get some action out in the pen for the Mariners. Tom went one, two, three in the seventh. Got the first two outs of the eighth. Walked Springer and then got Singleton to ground out the first. Here in the ninth, he got Dominguez in a ground out. Walking now a double. Danny Farquhar getting loose in the pen. Here's it Marwin Gonzalez. Home run back in the second inning against Taiwan Walker. Lined out to left. Rounded out to Cano.
Runs going to score as Cano throws out Gonzalez. Tenth assist for Cano. Two down. Run scores. 10 4 ball game. Happy act for Gonzalez. Will be his second tonight. Six for the season. LJ Hogs. Strike one. And a one. This will do it right here. Seeger takes a nice hop. Throws that hose, and that'll do it. Mariners win 10 4, and for the first time this season, they are seven games over 500. How about that, Mike? Congratulations to Taiwan Walker getting his first win of the season. It was a good start for Taiwan. He went six innings, gave up three runs on five hits. A couple of home runs hurt him, but other than that, thought he pitched well. Had six strikeouts and a lot of offense and power from the Mariners, including Michael Saunders. Recently back from the disabled list, a two-run homer to give the Mariners the lead. Cano with a three-run homer, and James Jones, four hits tonight and three stolen bases. Good night all around for the Mariners. Indeed, last time the Mariners this far beyond 500 was the end of the 09 season when they finished eight above. Three hours and seven minutes for this baby. 10-4 Mariners. Brad and Bill, it's all yours.